Morris Garage was a British automotive brand once known for making sports cars from the late 1920s, but now it's owned by a Chinese giant automaker called Syke Motors. You might have heard of MG, Wuling, Maxis in Nepal. They're all under the same parent company, Syke. Do you remember the MG Comet, the small micro car? What about the Wuling Air EV? Yeah, they're pretty much similar, aren't they? Now you know why. But MG have taken a route now where they produce both EVs and regular gasoline IC vehicles like MG7, and then you have MG5 and EV, you have MG Hector, you have MG ZS and ZS EV, which is a beloved car in Nepal. And this is the MG4. And it's in an eye-catchy volcano orange. It's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery. And depending on the variant of this car, it's either a NMC battery or a LFP battery, which gives an estimated range of about 450 kilometers. But you drive carefully, you drive with a light foot, it can even go up to 500 kilometers. Who knows? But on top of that, this car comes under the hood. A proper, proper 150 kilowatt motor, which means it's got a good top speed and it can produce 250 newton meters of torque, which is more than ample for daily city driving. And if we're here talking about numbers, the ground clearance on this car is 165 mm which I know for many of you is a bit of a iffy topic, but that's what I'm here for to check out whether it's enough or not. So we'll get on to that later in the video. And this car is fast. Like it's got a claimed zero to hundred of under eight seconds, which honestly is hot hatchback territory. And it's got a top speed of over 150 kilometers an hour. So that's more than enough. So without further ado, I'm going to hop into the driver's seat and let's check out what this car is all about. Oh, by the way, did I tell you? It's actually a real wheel drive, like for an EV. How awesome is that? Here's the key fob, but before I start driving, just hold up for a moment. There's actually no power button on this car. There's actually enough of proximity sensors related to the key that it just knows you're in here. So all you need to do to drive is put your foot on the brake and then shift the gear knob. And similarly, when you come out of the car, all you need to do is just leave the car. And once you're away for a certain distance, it knows you're away and it'll automatically power off the car. You can also manually power off the car while you're inside the vehicle, but that requires you to go into the menu dig into the settings, go into safety mode, and then power off. So let's get quickly into driving. <laughs> Just quick impressions. First thing first on this car is that you are planted very low on this car seat wise. It's just hugging the road, honestly. <laughs> and that really makes you feel one with the road. Again, that whole, this is a driver's car that you buy to drive fast. And adding to that, Unlike most cars, there's also like a bit of side support on your seat, which is really great. And on top of that, I also want to add that the suspension on this car, while I wouldn't say is the softest in town, it's definitely more on the stiffer side, but it does a good job of like taking in potholes. It's got enough dampening and recoil that you don't feel all that jerkiness on the inside. You can definitely get away with potholes, bumpy roads, unpitched roads without too much. But again, really on the stiffer side to inspire confidence while cornering on straights where you make quick turns, no body roll, none of that nonsense. Brake wise on this car for disc brakes, so good amount of braking for the amount of power this car has. 
but because this is an EV, there's also regenerative braking. And fortunately, the one miss I felt about regen braking was there isn't any paddle shifters or like a physical button. You have to like access the menu here. But you can always drive while accessing the uh, toggles for uh, driving modes and for regenerative braking. Braking, regen braking is given to you in low, medium, high and adaptive mode, which I don't know what MG have in mind, but adaptive. You also have the option of one pedal driving, which really has an intrusive feel on regen braking. But hey, it's a one pedal driving. You can, in theory, just drive without ever touching the braking pedal. And driving mode wise, you have a snow, eco, normal, sport, and a custom mode that lets you like tweak things around here and there. And so because of all of that, you really do enjoy just driving around in this car. The one thing that I did unfortunately notice though was that while visibility from the front is great, like it's superb, a wide windshield, small glass panels here, big large front windows. It's not the best when it comes to the view from the rear view mirror. The slope angle of the glass pane at the back is very slanted for that aerodynamic sporty look. And the seat pillars on the back, like behind the back seat, they're also large and bulky. So again, small rear glass pane. And as a result, what happens is you just have poor visibility with the three headrests at the back. But you drive this car to go fast and just put it into sports mode, foot down and away you go. <laughs> like no questions asked, no hiccups, nothing. You just put your foot down and the car goes. There is no hiccup. There is an instant torque that EVs have and unfortunately you're gonna hit the speed limit quite quick so uh, i'm just gonna go back to eco mode for my safety <laughs> but even in eco mode like you put your foot down and there is enough of torque that 40 to 60 just happens in an instant in this car no questions asked So as for the exteriors on the car, it's a very sharp and edgy looking car throughout. Your headlights, your fenders, your skirts, your spoilers, everything about it is just very edgy on it. Just looking at the front, here's an example. There's a crease on the bonnet here. There's no function for it. <laughs> it's just to make the car look edgy. <laughs> and so starting from the front, a big MG badge, followed by, again, sharp cut headlights and DRLs on top. And then coming to the side, you have these slanted side lights, which really is just cool flare done by MG. You have a 360 camera, one of them, uh, of the parking sensors there, and an air intake, not for your engine, but for your AC here. Then as you come along to the side, again, these fenders, quite edgy again, look very sharp. You do have more ADAS sensors up at the top. You have your antennas here, your wipers, and then you have automatic mirrors on the side with more side lights. This side skirt down here is a bit prominent in the sense it does bulge out a bit, like there's a bit of an angle. It's not completely straight, but just looking at the car from a bit back, you have sort of green tinted front windows and a black tinted rear window which means that it's basically put in there for like protection against uv and good cabin insulation and let me just add on that i just love this volcano orange and black sort of like dual paint tone going on in the body like really love it and then coming towards the back of the car here you actually have your charging port so it is an AC charger as well as a DC charger. That was a nice pop. <laughs> so for AC charging, the car supports a regular granny charger, which is 3.3 kilowatts 
that will probably take you a whole 24 hours to fill up a 64 kilowatt hour battery but you can also step up the game and charge your car via a fast ac charger which means that the charge time will be reduced to about 8 to 10 hours basically an overnight charge at that point if you're going 0 to 100 and the car is built on a 400 volt architecture so it can definitely take a good amount of dc fast charging which will definitely also reduce your highway wait times also a cool psych vision again the parent company motor that i was talking about and i think at the back is where it's at on this car like got so many visual key designs at the back but quickly we will look down on the rim the car is actually equipped with 18 inch rims and disc brakes on both the front and at the back however these are actually just aero rims like aero cap covers to make the car more aerodynamic the rim itself is on the inside and again that large c pillar that i was talking about here coming towards the back you have this split dual sort of rear spoiler game going on it looks very aerodynamic and it's very slanted like this split rear spoiler actually reminds me of that new lotus suv the wow. electra and you've got a wiper at the back which honestly is a great add-on more mg badging and electric badging and you have a tail bar that just swoops right across here i also really like these lines that light up in the dark <laughs> they're like it's a really nice touch on my mg didn't need to but did it and just looks cool again more very pointy edgy looking lights tail lights at the back boot space on this car is an average sort of 363 liters in this configuration but you do have the option of folding down your rear seats and removing this privacy cover in that very familiar 60 is to 40 ratio at the back which will expand the boot space of this car to 1177 liters which is more than enough coming back there is a bit of an underfloor storage bed here but as you can clearly see there's not much space it's just your tire mobility kit and an air compressor that you can use so as for the interiors on this car it's got that whole sharp edgy theme that was on the outside on the inside too it's got like a two spoke steering wheel and a center floating console seems to be the main point of attraction here with a 10.25 inch infotainment screen and a 7 inch driver's display this comes with wired apple carplay and android auto it's got 360 degree camera this variant has a wireless charger and overall it's a very healthy mix of piano black tiles soft touch points tactile buttons and screen controls now as for the driver's seat on the door itself you have one touch for all the windows which is honestly very cool you have your lock here and a doorknob here speakers here and a big water holder with more storage space here your mirror adjustment and closing and opening your mirror can be done here and your headlight angle can be adjusted through this ac vent and you have your bonnet opener there your media controls more on the right your settings on the left as for the stocks on the left hand side you have your indicators and then your headlights are integrated into the stock on the right hand side stock you have your wipers and then this is the speed and intensity of the wiper and then you have a button here to turn off and turn on your rear wiper moving on to the center of the car you have 
two cubbies here but they can only be used by smaller bottle holders you have a shelf here that opens and closes it's a really nice feeling here it's like a net in case you want to put any cards and a armrest with a pretty deep storage space on the inside tactile buttons here your ac button your defrosting front and back buttons hazard lights your home they're all clicky buttons and your volume for your media controls as for your steering wheel adjustment with a pull down here it can be adjusted for reach and rake and similarly you can also adjust your seat the driver's seat can be adjusted electronically via toggles on the right hand side the height the reach and then you have your recline angle they can all be adjusted now coming on to the passenger side hard touch soft touch a good mixture you have another big water bottle holder your window controls also one touch on this side by the way good grab handle coming in you do have good amount of legroom at the front there is a decent size glove box your center console again is a mixture of soft touch points piano black very sleek edgy looking ac vents on this side and then on top you have your mirror that can come out your sun visor and a vanity mirror here in the middle of the car on the ceiling you have your lights this is for door and you have an SOS button. I'm not sure how MG in Nepal programmed this. And you have a sunglass holder here. You have anti-glare rear view mirror, which can be turned on and off via this button. Now coming on to the rear seat, it's a one touch window opening and closing at the back to your door knob. You have a small cuppy with a bit of a rubber lining smaller storage space a smaller bottle will fit these side skirts do extend a bit so your shins and your calves might be a bit careful if it's muddy and rainy but getting into the car is super easy and convenient because it's low your front seat comes with two pockets for like cell phones and smaller items and a bigger one down here well thought of because it's also like scooped up a bit and so there's more knee room ample amount of leg room as well and footwell room there is one USB A outlet and another cubby down here no ac vent at the back but ac from the front seems to be doing just okay at the moment something i did notice that mg4 did lack at the back was some sort of center armrest usually most cars even at this price point have it and it's nice to see that there are isofix points on both sides of the rear seat. So I've driven this car quite a bit now and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Like, yes, it has that bit of a long lip at the front, kind of like a sports car. Wow. And I am very careful in my approach angles not to mess that up. I'm also a tad bit cautious of the long wheelbase and the ground clearance on this 165 mm for a country like Nepal is not the best, but it's doable. But I love to drive this car. Like, it's such a fun car to drive. I did notice that the ADAS settings are a bit intrusive in the sense there's a lot of sensors on this car, which is great. A lot of prevented braking might save you from an accident someday. But in a country like Nepal, where road discipline is honestly quite chaotic, I've had a lot of beeps, bongs, and alerts just timing up almost intrusively at times 
And unfortunately, the only way to actually turn off these ADAS settings is go into the menu, into the car settings, and then just manually turn them off all at once, one by one. And I think the most unfortunate part is that each time the car is powered off and I come back and drive again, all of them are restored by default. So they're all on again. And I again have to go digging in the menu to turn it off. It's a quick software fix by MG, but until then the owners of this car will learn, have to learn to live with it. But other than that though, the car's handling, the car's performance, the car's straight line speed, and that suspension turned out to be a bit stiff, but for a good reason, it really handles, it really handles cornering and speeds really well. No body rule, no joke. It's a very serious car, honestly. In a very bumpy road, it might not feel the best in the sense, yes, there is a lot of recoil happening and that recoil is passed on to passengers inside, but you put your foot down and away you go. <laughs> I don't think I could ever get enough of that. <laughs> so yes, the car might be a bit difficult at times because of our road condition. Like if you had clean pitch, smooth roads everywhere wouldn't be a problem but due to the nature of Nepal just bumpy roads might be a bit of a challenge but if you're ready to work for the car then this car will definitely be rewarding especially on the highway <laughs> anyway hope you liked my review drop a comment if you have any question or anything at all and I'll see you on the next one